Hey guys, I got a request to do a video on what are bases and subspaces and like as we get to like more abstract topics in linear algebra, it's really important that you have like a strong foundation in what these things mean uh, because as we start getting with more compl complex computations and stuff, it's not going to be really intuitive on like what we should be doing. And the math isn't exactly like really difficult math, but the, the tricky part of the problem actually comes from like your actual understanding of what these concepts are. So let's, uh, let's take a look. And a base, bases that we have in the title, spelled B-A-S-E-S, -S, is the plural for basis. And there's, what, is, what exactly is a basis? And a basis, the definition, putting up on the screen right now, at least in linear algebra, the definition of a basis is a set of linearly independent vectors which span a vector space. So let's break this down a little bit. So let's take a look. What does it mean to span a vector space? And I have a really like in-detail video about spans, which you, if you haven't already seen, I definitely recommend checking that out because um, I'm going to go through it a little bit faster here. But Remember, so if we if we said that we were to span v1 and v2, where v1 and v2 are vectors in R2 and are linearly independent, then that would mean that we've got some constant times the first vector plus a constant times the second vector. And let's like let's draw this out to see what, what this means. So let's say that this is v1 and let's call this green vector v2. And the combination would just be the red the vec red vector plus the green vector, right? So if I were to scale any of them, I could I could reach any point in the entire all of R2. Right? And if this isn't clear, I would take a take a look at the other video on my channel on spans. But we can reach every point in R2, right? But that's because v1 and v2 are linearly independent. So remember that like there's other cases where, you know, if we had a vector like this red vector, if this was v1, and then we had another vector which goes in the same direction, our span in that case would be a line, right? So what it means to be a basis, it means that it's the span which will um, it, it is it's the set of vectors that if we took the span of that it would reach every single point in the vector space that we're talking about so in this case r2 right so if we were and similarly with with r3 and again this is in uh, it's in my other video on my channel in a bit more detail but if we had the same span that we we're talking about, right? Let's say that we spanned a plane, but now we're looking at R3. This clearly does not reach every single point in R3, meaning that this is not a basis for R3, This whatever this span may be. But if I added a vector orthogonal to that plane, if I added that to the set, then we'd be able to, as we change the length of the red one, because we're taking a linear combination, um, then we could basically sweep that plane through all space of R3. And then in that case, we would be able to reach all points of R3. And what you should notice here, what you should take away, is that those three vectors would be elements of R3, and they, were all, they are all linearly independent. So what you'll notice is that if you have n vectors, n, uh, like if we wanted to find a basis for Rn, then if we had n vectors 
which are elements of Rn, and they're all linearly independent. That is the basis, right? That's kind of the pattern that we're going with here. So let's take a look now. What is a subspace? And so in, in, these, in these examples, our vector spaces was R2 and we had R3. So a, a subspace is just a vector space, just like R2 and R3, but it's like uh, within R2 or within R3. And in order to determine if we can say that they are in R2 or R3, they need to, they need to pass these three properties. And the three properties of the subspace. And these properties are number one. If I take, or let's say, first of all, let's say, let S be a subspace. So number one, the zero vector needs to be in the subspace. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go over these like geometrically in just a, just a second. Number two, we need if if x if x is in the subspace, any scalar times x must also be an element of the subspace. Oh. Where c is an element of r, and then number three. We've got if x and y are in the subspace, then the addition of those two vectors must also be in the subspace. So that kind of looks like a whole lot of nothing. But let's take this into an example. So and let's break it down into the a smaller dimension, R2. So what I want to determine here, hold on, let's, so I've got R2. This, in, this entire sheet, this, this coordinate axis is R2. And I'm trying to figure out, let's say, I want to figure out if this plane right here, this region X right here, Uh, let's call this let's call this Q. So is Q a subspace of R two? So number one is zero in this subspace. In this case, Q. Well, zero is right here, right on the line. So the first one is true. The second one. If x is in the subspace, is could I scale x by any ve any vector, right? Or sorry, any could I scale x by any real number, and would it still be in the subspace? So let's say I had, let's say I had um, a vector x, because I know x is in the subspace, right? This is x. If I were to scale x by anything, well, what if I scaled it all the way out here? Well, that's not in the subspace, right? Because this portion out here, that's not in it. What if I scaled it the other way? This way. I'm not in the subspace anymore either, right? So it fails the second condition. Another way of thinking of it is if you want to add two vectors in the subspace, you could definitely come up with some combinations where if you were to add those two vectors, it would be outside of Q. So. Let's take another example, R2. OK. And let's take this line here. OK. Let's call this, uh, let's call this one S. OK. Our line is S. Well, is S through 0, right? 
is because that's our first one. Zero must be an S. And it is. Right there. Zero is on on uh, it's in S, right? Okay. I'm gonna get rid of these. The next one. If I took any vector S and I scaled it, would it also be on S? So let's say this is X. If I were to scale that, no matter how much I scale it by, it's always going to be on that line, which is S, which means that the that next condition is also passed. Okay. So there's X, and then the last one, I need to show addition. So I'm, let's take another vector, Y, and let's put Y in the other direction. If I were to... If I were to add these two, I would get some sort of vector like, in this case, it would look like that, right? But if x and y could be anything, right? So basically, if I were to, if I changed those, if I changed those vectors, but they're still vectors on the line, no matter how I add them, they will also be on the line, right? So the addition of two vectors in S will also be on S meaning that that passes all three points, all three properties, sorry. So this S is a subspace, but I could easily make this not a subspace if all I did was, if I moved this S so it doesn't pass through the origin, right? And then it would fail the subspace test. So that's, a, that's like a more geometric way of thinking of the subspace test. It's not super duper important, um, but Definitely is a little bit helpful um, when you're looking at some of the theorems that are in the in the lecture notes. But that's call, kind of all I have to say about uh, bases and subspaces. Um, but yeah, I hope this video was helpful. And make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. All right, see you guys in the next one.